This video is brought to you by Brilliant. All right, let's start with the MVP or the bestowed upon item that makes any desk setup possible. The desk itself. What you see is the Smart Desk Pro by Autonomous. I chose the classic size of 53 by 29 inches because I wanted the desk to utilize the specific corner of the studio. Now I've had large desks in the past and it turned out that I prefer more compact dimensions. This particular size is ideal for my requirements. The desk comes disassembled and is packed with all the necessary tools and instructions to handle the process with ease. Given my studio aesthetics, I went for the black frame with the walnut tabletop which I think it looks clean and stealthy in the corner, especially if I close all the curtains. This motorized desk can be adjusted in height as you can expect to match any work needs. I have three positions memorized, one sitting, one standing and one for recording memorized at the desk's lowest position. The dual motors of the desk are tranquil and overall I couldn't ask for more. I know exactly what to expect as far as durability goes since this is my second autonomous desk. The first one in white which is right here has served me well for a long time now and although it's been in many places and it has gone up and down thousands of times it looks and works as new. Autonomous sent me their custom cable tray organizer as well which I have to say makes all the difference in the world. Checking the power outlet and all the messy cables in it have saved me hours of making the entire setup look very organized. I might spray the cable tray black later but I'm delighted with the results so far. The desk mat on top of the walnut top is by Orbit Key and it is the large version in black. This mat creates visual structure to the desk and besides being a giant mouse pad it serves as a document stashing place thanks to the clever document hideaway. It also has magnets built in which thanks to the provided magnet clip helps point the few cables on my desk on the right path. The top ridge or toolbar is also great for keeping pens and other knickknacks occasionally. The peripherals on top of the desk mat are three and I'll start with the Apple's trackpad. This trackpad has only one very responsible purpose to swipe between my desktops. I constantly drag multiple files and assets between my desktops and as I grab them with my mouse I can quickly move around my spaces thanks to the trackpad. When my mouse dies it's also great to have a Pack a pointing device while switching mice. Talking about mice or mouses, mice? I use the glorious model O Mouse by PC Gaming Race. I know not a very Mac oriented choice, but this mouse was a gift by a close friend of mine. And as someone who knows very little about esports, I got mesmerized by the lightweight of this mouse and most of all, the precision. Although this is an RGB mouse, I have the lights turned off because I'm not a gamer per se and preserving the battery matters more. My only regret is that this brand does not have a decent Mac support to customize the experience and buttons but what are you gonna do? The keyboard that I use is IQ Unix L80 Cosmic Traveler Wireless Mechanical Keyboard. It is a very hefty Mac oriented mechanical keyboard that can connect in three different ways and yeah it's very quirky. Mine I believe comes with the linear speed 45 grams TTC switches in an 83 keys layout and it is just very satisfying to type on. Inspired by people's childhood dreams of becoming space travelers, this version of the keyboard is based on the IQ Unix L80 frame which I have a dedicated video on and I'll link below. There are even additional contrasting keycaps in the package that are just too cute not to showcase. Like the mouse, although it is backlit, I use it with lights turned off to squeeze out maximum battery life. Alongside the keyboard, I use a memory foam leather palm rest pad, which honestly is not necessary for this particular keyboard, but it's very nice to have, very forgiving and fluffy to use. I'm still waiting for my custom M1 Max MacBook Pro to arrive and in the meantime I keep relying on my trusty 13 inch MacBook Pro. I keep it propped vertically, cradled inside a Vadir vertical laptop stand. Honestly I bought this stand just because it's black but it turned out to have some features that I didn't consider. For example, aside from keeping the laptop propped it can also accommodate my iPad if I use it as a second screen and it's quite nice actually. The most important accessory that has allowed me to use the 13 inch MacBook Pro as a workstation this year by the way is OWC's Thunderbolt dock. I've been using OWC items for a long time and all of their products are exceptionally dependable. This dock has all the ports I need and powers the entire setup allowing me to plug only one cable to the MacBook Pro. 
This cable powers the laptop, runs picture as well as data from all the other ports and it's just amazing. In previous setups I kept the uh, docked velcro underneath the desk but this time I gave it justice and I kept it on top because it looks as good as it is versatile. A new addition to my desk is the Elgato Stream Deck. Although this accessory is usually reserved for gamers, it turns out it is an excellent addition for studios like mine where I have a lot of smart bulbs, lights and outlets that I want to control easily. I purchased this Stream Deck to yell less at Siri about what lights I want to turn on and off but it turns out that this deck is great for other tasks like creating workflow shortcuts like in Final Cut Pro for example. I'm still exploring the possibilities of this tool and I'm very excited that I invested in it. Next to the Stream Deck is the Audion Evo 4 USB audio interface which sole purpose is to drive my shotgun mic. I don't do many meetings but I have the idea of doing some regular YouTube stream sessions where I'd love to hang out with you people. With that in mind and the fact that I wanted to have an easy to use flip a switch A roll set I positioned the camera and the mic on Elgato mounts at an angle in a position that allows me to create videos with less friction. I'll talk more about my concept in an upcoming studio tour video but for now the takeaway is that I wanted to record audio directly into my Mac and thanks to the Evo 4 interface I can do precisely that. Keep in mind that although this interface looks incredibly minimal it is plastic and a bit fragile. Look I can steal the dial in a jiffy. Anyway well on the interface topic I have my shotgun mic attached to a Rode PSA 1 arm which apparently is too powerful for my mic and I had to attach additional weights like these extra clamps in order to not shoot the mic in the sky. The microphone by the way is the Sennheiser MKH416 which is a gold standard in the YouTube industry and in Hollywood as well. The speakers that I've been using for a long time now are by Kanto model number YU2. These are powered speakers and I absolutely adore them. I have a dedicated video on them as well if you want to check it out below. Although they have a flatter profile I find them more than enough for my needs. Now I've been tempted to purchase the Kanto subwoofer as an addition but but this would make the entire setup more clunky so I'm okay for now. A new addition to them are the little stands that I purchased. My initial voice edits are always performed with headphones before I can resume my work on the Kanto speakers and even though I have the AirPods Max I still go back to the Audio-Technica M50X headphones as my reference of choice. My model is the older Bluetooth version but I use them with cables so I don't care if they have USB-C or not. When not in use I have them hanging on a Needle HS906 headphone stand which is a plastic and very inexpensive stand hook that can be used in various positions and angles. I might have to go in a different and more good looking headphone stand route. In fact give me just a... Uh And done. Just found a better solution. Isn't it fascinating how quickly we can find things these days thanks to the power of search engines? Now there's a lot of data out there and if you want to learn how to search it effectively you can check out Brilliant's course on search engines which is the course that I'm currently taking myself. This course explores the core ideas behind search engine technology. You know how when you type a query into the search box you get results in a fraction of a second even though the web has billions of pages containing trillions of words. Aside from learning the search engine design this course even teaches how to create your own simple search index and learn techniques for making search run faster on that index. Like this course Brilliant provides other courses with storytelling code writing, interactive challenges and problems to solve helping you master technical subjects and understanding the world better. To support the channel and sign up for free go to brilliant.org forward slash this is e and by the way the first 200 people to upgrade with this link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription which is what I use. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room and by elephant I mean the giant 38 inches LG ultrawide monitor bearing the simple to remember model name 38WN95C-W. It is a fantastic monitor that I've been using for 6 months now even more. It's not cheap costing 1600 bucks but it has a lot to offer when it comes to features. It's a nano IPS panel with 100% sRGB and 98% DCI-P3 and VESA HDR600. As far as connectivity goes it comes with a Thunderbolt 3 port providing 94 watts of PD power which is more than enough for any Mac. What's sweet about this display is the 144Hz refresh rate which combined with my glorious gaming mouse translates into woo, buttery smooth Mac operation something like ProMotion 
on the new iPhones. This ginormous display had to be mounted on a monitor arm at some point and although I had it barely hanging on a few of my existing arms in the other studio, I had to invest in something responsible. So I purchased an Ergotron HX monitor arm in black which frankly felt like buying an XDR stand, a very hefty price. Nevertheless, this arm is heavy duty and can hold a display as big as 49 inches. In fact, this 38 inches felt like a baby when I cradled it in the Ergotron and for the first time I felt comfortable swinging it in any direction that I wanted. On top of the monitor, I have installed the Xiaomi Mi Computer Monitor light bar, which is minimal in design as with most Xiaomi products. I was very impressed by it, by the way. It runs power from one of the USBs on the back of the monitor and get this, it attaches magnetically to the stand that it comes with. To top it all, it comes with the most minimal and cool looking circular remote control which makes me feel like a DJ or more like a pro user. Thanks to this dial, I can control the brightness of the light and change the temperature of it at my will. Very cool. Now I call this desk setup a better version of what's to come since I'm still waiting for the new MacBook Pro and some other decorations and organization tools. So subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing the final version of the setup soon. You can check out the previous iterations of my desk setups in my desk setup playlist here. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.